Mark Levinson, yeah. Many thanks. So much wind now and the weather. Lenis. Hello my audio friends, this is Mike in Venice and uh, I will visit now Mark Levinson, Daniel Herz in Venice and uh, I will hear products of him uh, in person. <laughs> so we will see, it's not, the weather is not so good and uh, yesterday I was here too and uh, there was the weather very well and so I'm a little bit sorry for that, for the pictures now, but let's start and watch this. So this is an island, as you can see, was uh, in, in the past, uh, in the 16th and 17th century, also in the 15th century, was the island for the rich people that came here in the summertime. Now we call, uh, uh, the, the Venetian people call this island the Pinkling Island, because it's every time colder than downtown. Minimum three, four degree less. So it's every time cold. Cold and cold. Because the wind is different. So it's not an island, it's an Iceland. <laughs> no, it's not an Iceland, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's more mine, you see a smile on my face. Well, <laughs> as Oscar Wilde said, I have the simplest of tastes. Yes, I'm sure. always satisfied with the As best. everything in the world. <laughs> well, that's why we make it. <laughs> Look, Amber is a great system for the money. It's a sweet spot, okay? But when you talk about tiara, you're talking about so many different things, you know. By amplification, no passive crossover, uh, a new kind of uh, uh, air restriction tweeter, a woofer with a resonant frequency of 27 hertz. You feel the bass in there, you feel the, the yeah. foundation, the extension. Yes. Well, that and more, more, more details on the strings. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> but when we put a passive crossover in there, you lost a lot of that. Yeah. And so it's like if you want all of this, here it is. But on the other hand, it's a fraction of the cost of a lot of other systems. For sure. I mean, it's one-fourth or one-fifth the cost of quite a few other systems that are sold. Especially in the Maria, because there's some DAC inside. Well, there's no DAC inside. Yeah, okay. The Mighty but it's the same does, function. does the conversion. Yes. But, right. Right. It, it's like... <clears throat> Maria does part of it. Chiara does part of it. But together, it's the first time to have not only this kind of resolution and combination of uh, uh, natural sound and detail and deep bass and compact. See, that's mm -hmm. the thing. Yeah. It fits in a home. It fits in an apartment. It's not a refrigerator. You know, it's something yes. that you can live with. Um, it, a lot of people don't have space for a big, huge thing. Yes, that's it. You know, so... <clears throat> But there's nothing like it on the market. You can't compare it to anything. Um, you can't buy the amplifier and get the speakers later. Well, you could, but you won't get that sound. You know what I mean? It, it, it's like a package. But the idea to have something that sounds like that, and yet, you know, it's modest in size, fits in apartments and homes, you know, it's, 
There's and no so it can can if the volume you can crank up the volume and it has pressure and oh, well, yeah, yeah and I know you will show it to me. Well, if you want, I don't, yeah, I yeah don't sure, want. sure, do it. Okay. Well, it's only my my microphone of the portable, so. So this is a recording I made in 1976 of Bill Elgard, the mm -hmm. drummer. It's your recording. Yeah. yeah. I recorded it on a Studer A80 at 30 inches per second. Actually, one inch tape for four tracks, full quarter inch per track at 30 IPS. We built our own microphone preamplifiers. We built our own recorded playback back electronics for the Studer. And it was just two people, Billy played and I recorded. And um, this is a very important recording for me for several reasons. The first one is just an amazing piece of music. It's a story of a life in 10 tracks. It's sort of a Zen concept. Um, this is Bill's composition. The 10 tracks are birth, sleep, sense, feeling, thinking, social, ideological, nirvana, old age, and death. And it's very graphic if you learn to listen to it. The problem is, it's so dynamic that most people can't play it back. And this was a very interesting development for me because I thought to myself, what is audio equipment supposed to do? It's supposed to take what the musicians did and enable people to hear it, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. So what do we say to a musician like Bill? Sorry, we can't play it back. <laughs> Nobody can hear it. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're going to say? No. Well, okay, but then how do you make it play? How do you reproduce it? I'll play it for you and you'll see what the problem is. All okay, right? okay. Let's do it. Thank you. That sounds like a horn system with the pressure and the, and the speed and the uh, and the tone, but the tone and horn system, okay, but this is clean. Wow. Wow, that was very loud and so real. Thank you. Wow. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for this uh, impression here. Well, like I said, it takes a while to listen, to hear all the different things that a system can, can do. In particular, Chiara, because it's Chiara reveals so much of what the recording is. Yeah, but the Most recording system, was wonderful. Wow. But how much of it can come through? Mm -hmm. You play this on normal systems, you don't get that sound. You'll see. You'll see. I'll send you the file. You can have it. I'll give it to you. Please. Please. Yeah, I'll, I'll have it. Anything I have, you can have. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm just saying. It's no YouTube strike for me, I hope. <laughs> no, uh, I, I, I just mean to say that Chiara is. Chiara makes you wonder what have I been listening to all these years? How much of a percent of the recording? 30%. 40%, 20%, 50%. Kiara shows you so much more. You play this recording on anything you've got, and you'll yeah. see what I mean. It's like, yeah, what happened? True. What happened? And that's the reason I decided to make it. It doesn't look like a speaker is supposed to look, right? You look at it and you think, this thing can't work. Yeah. What the hell is this? <laughs> yes. I call it the, the, the ugly duckling. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know the children's story? Uh, there's a, a group of baby ducks. Okay. And one of them looks weird, and they make fun of it. It turns out to be a swan. 
<laughs> okay. So yeah. you look at this and you think it can't work. What is that? And all of a sudden, boom, you know? Yeah. So there's a reason why it looks like that. So it's because it sounds like that, you know? It's all to make that sound. And uh, it's essentially a new category. It's not the normal anything. It's just something that works. But you have to hear it and decide, you know. Yeah. Um, That's important to hear it first time and then you are convinced. Yeah. Um, uh, one more thing I'll play. Last thing I'll play, then we go to the video. This is... Um, uh, if I can find it. is my shepherd I shall not want okay okay this is this is a track from the live recordings at Red Rose music album that I made to help Sony introduce VSD and SACD in 2001 this was a track from the SACD that was used to introduce SACD mm -hmm. and VSD. Um, all the tracks were recorded, two microphones to VSD, no mixing, no mastering, it's pure VSD, period. And by the way, there is almost no pure VSD, VSD. it's PCM processed. Mm -hmm. So it's really basically a CD anyway, but this is real pure VSD. Oh, well, this is a, a WAV file. It's a, uh, this is a PCM version, but with C-Wave, it sounds like DSD anyway. Okay. But this was um, a recording of um, Kim Cottrell's mother reciting the 23rd Psalm, and I'm playing Japanese and Korean temple bells. Oh. So this is just that, and you might want to hear this. Okay.